So in my last video, I talked about how I've started to adapt my process to use airbrush to do my underpaintings. I also mentioned that I've started building my own frames. And so in this video, we're going to take a look at that process of how I made this frame for this piece that I'm working on. So the process starts like all woodworking projects with ripping down boards to size. In this particular case, there won't be any moldings added to the outer edges of the frame, so this will be its final width. Next is routing in the rabbit that the painting will set into and the decorative details around the frame's opening. You can see I didn't quite get it set right and it needs some cleanup by hand. And here are a few examples of what the opening details can look like. This frame is going to use the one on the right. At this point, since the router is set up, I'm going to go ahead and cut the moldings that will decorate the face of the frame. It's a pretty repetitive process of just routing the detail and then ripping it down to size over and over and over again. This is also the first chance we get to see an idea of what the frame will become. At this point, it's time to cut everything down to its final size and add the miters that will bring it together. So mitered edges are not terribly strong since it's using the wood's end grain and they're just kind of butted together and that end grain will soak in a lot of this glue, which will weaken the joint. So I'm gonna use a doweling jig here and add dowels to strengthen the corners. The nice thing is that the dowels also help hold the frame together during assembly and without needing a whole bunch of clamps and stuff to hold it in place.
once that's dry and sanded up, it's time to start sizing the, the moldings that are going to decorate the face of the frame. These are just glued and pinned in place. After the frame is fully assembled, I go over all the adjoining corners with wood filler to help make sure when the frame is done, it looks like it was made from a single piece of wood. It also softens the transitions in the corners. This can only be done if the frame is going to be painted like this one. At this point, it's just lots and lots of sanding. So keep a lookout next month for part two when we paint and gild the frame opening and wrap up the build. Until then, make sure to follow me on Instagram and here on YouTube and make sure to ring the bell so you're notified when part two comes out. Thanks for watching.